Hello and welcome to another episode of Farming Life at La Forge. For those of you who are new here, my name is Laura and this channel is all about our farming lives here in France. episode first up dad will be giving you a tour of our servicing shed so basically showing you everything that he has in there um, and then i will show you what i am doing over on the other farm over in montreux so we're doing up the houses so you get to see whereabouts we are with that and then at the end of today's video you guys will get to see um dehorning cattle you might have already seen on the tour of our cattle that some of the heifers had horns on them so we're taking them horns off today and you'll see that at the end of today's video so just before we get to the video, I would like to announce that we will be doing a video, um, a Q&A, so questions and answers. So you can leave any questions that you have down below in the comments. Contact me on Instagram or on Facebook, um, leave a message and we will hold back a list of questions to answer for. So if you have questions for me, mom, dad, or just general questions about the farm and we will answer them. Maybe not in the next video, but in the video after that, as the next video is all about book spreading and it's already been edited. So now let's get to the video. Uh, here is our 110 New Holland digger. Have it in for service. It's gone back over to the other farm now for a few weeks. Have uh, a few work, a bit of work to do there over the winter. Uh, we're changing the oil, uh, all the filters, checking all the hubs, just blowing out radiators, no air filter. Uh, the engine oil is. 110. Uh, I don't know, the engine oil is 10W40. Uh, it withstands more heat because the summers are fairly hot here. And that's all about that. You've seen it working there a few times. Uh, like it well. And hopefully, I'll be able to show you shortly uh, pulling it after the trailer when I'm going around from job to job. So, uh, this is our uh, little trolley with the we have the gear oil here for the hubs, it's on air, and we have the grease on air. So, um, actually they were all in the other farm, we, we have other ones here ourselves in, in the other workshop, and they're there, awful handy for that. Then, uh, <coughs> this is more or less our service shed we keep aisles and that, and when we're parking in something, if we're servicing, sometimes cook one for a day or two, because we'll be at other jobs. This is our oil area. We buy enough oil around December, and we'll have more store down there, uh, because we get the bat back. And so we, any buying we do, we do before the Christmas, because we only claim the bat back once a year. That's just there, something I made up to keep the dust out, the funnels, and all the grease cones, and all is there. The diesel tank is up there, it's small, but the, the person that fills it is only down the road, so he fills it on a, a phone call. Uh, the pump is outside, you can show it. Uh, this shed had all lost like that. See that bit of a loft, we left that there for storage. All this was all lofted, so you couldn't even get in the tractor when we came here first. And we reinforced the trusses in case the, the shed wouldn't, uh, the barn wouldn't uh, spread apart. So uh, it's okay that way. These old barns are not much good for us now, it's only this. Uh, these are all our spare wheels. We have nearly a spare wheel for every trailer and baler. Say it again. We have spare wheels for all the tractors and trailers and everything. So even the Manitou. Uh, that's our little square baler, we had it out last year. Uh, not a bother to it. Uh, we hope to have it out this year. Um, that's our big cement mixer for um, it'll hold a cubic meter. Um, have much work to do with it now. They were just old bar oil bar stands that brought back from the other farm uh, to use them. Uh, I think that's about all in here. Uh, that's our 
We use it in the summer. It's just one I made up myself. It's our own little diesel Bowser for going around after the, the Land Rover or the pickup. It just plugs into the trailer lights and works. So it uh, works well as well. And uh, that's the cutting bar for the combine for uh, cutting the Cosa or I'll see the rape Cosa over here. But I made up that to fit on the 4630 just in the summer for cutting long bits of briars on the lifting fences. Because uh, you can't go out here in the summer with um, your normal hedge cutter. But that'll work just to cut the loose briars. And uh, here then is, uh, well these are belong to Luke. They're the remainder pieces of his 8240 that he sold for pieces. Parts. And that's there to be sold as well. Uh, Laura will be showing you the cabin going off on the lorry. Uh, these are, you've seen them before in the first videos, our solar uh, water pumps. Uh, the last two years we have them out with about 40 or 50 cattle all year and we have electric fence as well in there. We have them packed up now with air insulation to stop them freezing. <laughs> They're even working in the shed. And we have a battery fencer in there. And they'll suck water up out of a well 30 foot and they'll pump it any distance. Actually we bought them in Ireland, the pumps. We made up the frames, it's on another video. Um, so great job. Uh, and with the last two or three dry years, no bother, they were at a great test for the last two years. And then we just have a, an old vice now here, but this is just mainly just for servicing um, the machines. And now we have a compressor and that there. So uh, just about finished that and going over to the other farm. So that's it uh, on our digger and service shed. Now he'll think you smoke. The mask is dirtier than you. following along the channel from the very beginning know that on this farm here so the second farm that we have that we're renting um there are three houses so we showed you guys two of them in one of our very first episodes probably like the fourth episode or something like that got the calves and started doing my woodwork before christmas we had kind of just completely stopped um renovating this house um we have gotten quite a bit done all four rooms are now finished so i'm going to show you guys what's left to do and hopefully we can get this done within the next two three weeks and have it up and running for rent before the springtime. So what's left up here now is the hallway. So I have started stripping off the wallpaper here. I've just got the top bit all around left to do. And then the bathrooms, which are a bit of a mess at the moment, but the bathroom, I have to take off the wallpaper on the roof and fix a few things. And then inside there is the toilet. So yeah, in France, it is very, very typical for the 
bathroom to be separated from the toilet. to do are the doors and the bathrooms and that's up here done and then I can get cracking on downstairs so now I'm gonna go up here and show you dad he's going to be dehorning our heifers some of the heifers that we bought in they have horns so in France they do tend to keep the horns on them um, so I'll show you some clips of basically how we're taking the horns off the heifers this is uh, our machine for taking off horns off of a uh, job I hate. That's, you put the horn in there and you push the, it's a normal angle grinder. Made this ourselves. It's not my idea. I copied it because uh, to, buy, to buy one of the, over here is about 900 euro. <coughs> we don't use it that often. Thanks be to God. It's a job I hate. Um, so, <coughs> We have about nine here to take hardens off. Uh, because number one, we were expanding the herd and these were to be sold off last year and then we said to keep to expand the herd. Why we take them off is number one, we have locking barriers for the cows and they find it very difficult to get in and out when you have the locking barrier. Uh, number two, you'll always know in one pen where this cow's one cow with horns, they're all terrified of her. And you see marks everywhere where she'll be poking all the other cows. And another reason is when you're handling them yourself in the bush, if you have something with big horns, you're sure to get dirt. So that's the two reasons, uh, or the few reasons, we uh, take them off. Now in Ireland, you have to have all the horns gone. Over here, you don't. So when we came here, everything had hardened. And we were told uh, all the grand. Uh, every time we'd have cattle in the shed with them locking barriers, they were getting caught in it. And sometimes they'd break off the hardens themselves and there'd be blood everywhere. So it's okay if they break off hardens this time of the year because there's no flies. But in the summer, uh, if you have a cow damages their horn or damages another cow with her horn, you have to bring them in and it's a problem with flies. <laughs> so, um, the first time we took off horns, the bit doesn't do it over here. There is a specialised crowd, but you have to wait uh, months. They're, they're not very comfortable. So, uh, the bit says, oh, every farmer does it themselves. And there's this wire you get. You take them off, no bother. It goes through them like butter. Well, we took 36 off one day and I did nothing for three days afterwards with, with the pains in my arm. Uh, and, oh, bloody nightmare. So then I heard of this joke. We borrowed one off a fella uh, to take off two or three horns. And I copied it. Now, the one he'd have is metal or uh, aluminium. This is metal. It's a bit heavier. Just fits on any grinder. And, uh, well, it says 900 euro. So normally, all we'd have to do on a normal time is where we, if we dehorned a calf and it didn't do it right, especially with the paste, you might get one horn to grow now and again. And that's the time, uh, there's one in there, with one horn. Well, uh, I'll get in after. Yeah. Uh, so uh, <coughs> that's normally what uh, we'll be doing, the, just keeping that far. But uh, from now, from now, say, and then the February, I think was bits of horns, they're all gold. Because uh, last year there was some cows with horns and we didn't take them off, and I was sorry. But uh, <coughs> before we, uh, two weeks' time, we'll be doing the hair test. So all the heifers here that's under uh, two years old, 
they're going over to the other firm because anything that's under two, you don't have to uh, blood test for diseases. So, and as well as that, you only have to do a certain percentage of the herd when you have a lot of cattle. So, we have about 40 or 50 that we don't have to test on us, uh, which is good. And uh, yeah, so all these heifers will be going over and there's cows to come back that's due to calve uh, when they set them up in there. And uh, so there's better facilities here for, for doing the hair test. And well, we'll be hair testing beyond as well, but the young cattle just ship them out of the way for the, because they'll be over there then till uh, they go on calf next October. Okay, so I'll show you taking off one horn because I know it's not pretty. And uh, what they call it, uh, you see what you think. And uh, I'm sure I'll probably get comments on it. We don't like doing it. And the calves don't like doing it, but it has to be done. Now these are actually a year old. These are the ones you see Laura looking after all summer. the horn not too bad it's a bit of blood of it so I'm gonna stop that now sometimes I do like so you put a piece of twine around there and you tie it and we take the twine off after two or three minutes <laughs> Ireland they used to come over the south for crew. And uh, they used to use this big uh, machine to, to kind of knock them out. So this is a lot better. And hopefully I won't be doing this for a few years again. Hang on. So we spray a bit of uh, spray. So, uh, we there. So we let her out. They're not bad to go. If you do so, so. So, French guys, they prefer to leave the hardens on so you know their age. So when they're about that length, they're a year old. Uh, I don't know why, because it says it on the tag. Um, but don't play the turn. So we're trying to lift the hardens off hard now, and uh, then we won't show you anymore because it might turn you off your deer. Now, 
anybody that wants a horn with the force described into it, you can uh, ask Laura. That's Laura right over, and uh, you'll have a f famous horn from the force. Okay, over and out. Don't ask me. I do ask. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, before we let them up the crush, they were all locked in and the locking barriers, and we give them the anesthetic. Uh, it, it stops getting uh, tetanus and things like that. So uh, that's why they're not roaring, because uh, they're numbed up. But no, they're okay. They're short and quick, it's like a dentist. Okay. So that's the new horning over. Um, bit of a horrible sight to see. Not a job that anybody likes. Um, it is more of a fright to the cattle than actual pain. Like Dad just said, they are numbed, but yeah, still not nice to see. What well, has to be done as much for them as for us. So that's that for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And don't forget to leave your questions down below or on Facebook or Instagram um, for the Q&A video. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.